Puma. Yep. Puma athlete, Puma basketball, cool names under the brand. You have LaMelo, yeah. you have RJ Barrett, you have yourself, Skylar Diggins, WNBA. Yeah. What is it about Puma that intrigues you to join the names that I just mentioned? Oh, uh, for me, it was about, um, you know, when I first signed, it was about doing something that was different. Like, just trying to do something that everybody else wasn't doing, and most importantly, taking care of my family and put myself in a position to do that. And Puma was a, you know, a great opportunity, you know, for me to kind of come in and, and do my music and they let me just be who I am yeah. and still, you know, rep the brand and, and, and have Pumas on while I'm doing all of that. So um, I think just to, the opportunity to, to just to be free and just be who I am and they supported it all from the, the jump. So that was a big thing for me and that's what made me, you know, want to sign with Puma and, um, no, I'm glad I did. Why do you have such a confidence in this brand and not in an existing brand that's kind of already showcased their record, the record's there? The main thing for me was coming into this and, and trying to just do something special. Um, and Puma was the best opportunity for me to do that. Um, you know, you gotta have a lot of guys going to Nike, Adidas, um, same, you know, just following the same path um, year after year, but you never had anybody you know, sign with a brand like Puma, especially they haven't been in the basketball side. So yeah. it was it was shocking to a lot of people, you know, being the first you know athlete to, to on the basketball side to sign with them. Um, but like I said, it's been it's been it's been good so far. Um, we're getting better and better every year with all this stuff. The the shoes are different. Um, I think they're doing a great job at adjusting to how you know. You know basketball players play and like yeah, the different moves. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, they've been tapping into that a little bit more and they're, they're getting better and better. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about you know the future and where this brand could go. Outside of basketball, obviously, yeah. which is your love, you also have a love of music. Mm -hmm. For someone who's not familiar with your music, what is the vibe? Like, if you had to compare yourself to an artist or artists that are out there right now. What is the hybrid of what your music looks and sounds like and feels like? Who are those artists? I mean, I got a, a lot of artists that I, you know, listen to and and get inspiration from. Um, I mean, Drake is obviously well, Drake is Drake. Six guys. You know, yeah. I mean, Drake, Drake <laughs> is already up there. Um, Cole, um, guys like Lil Baby. So let's get into the future, the end goal, or you know, the ultimate goal yeah. with your music. Is it to win a Grammy? Is it to have a number yeah. one album, platinum Absolutely. album? Um, for me, I've always said since I started putting more music out, um, the Grammys is cool. The number ones, being on billboards, that's those are all goals. But for me personally, my goal when I make a song or if I put a project out is to really just reach somebody in a positive way and, you know, just relate to somebody. You know what I mean? As long as I can reach one person, anytime I drop something, yeah. I think my mission is, you know, accomplished. So you're a real rapper and Shaq does it for fun. So. Hey, man, it's just, <laughs> wow. It's true. It is what it is. Wow. I'm, I keep it real. And, you know, <laughs> Shaq has a lot of things that are great about him, and that was not one of them. So. Hey, man, some people like it, some people don't. Some people <laughs> like it, some people don't. In the 2018 draft, one of my favorites, it was stacked. Yourself, yes, number two. DeAndre Ayton, number one. You have Trey Young, Luca, Porter Jr. A lot of those guys have experienced postseason success. Mm. You have not. What is that frustration like for you and maneuvering through those emotions as you look towards the future? Um, I mean, watching the playoffs and not being in the playoffs is itself like just like it creates that fire in me just wanting to be there and, and wanting to be in that environment watching how exciting it, it looks on tv just watching how you know how the world talks about it how you know what i mean it's that that gets me going just watching games so for me i think um you know watch especially guys that i know and that i've played against and played with on the same teams you know doing their things it i love it for them like i'm I'm never gonna hate on yeah. their success, but at the same time, it's like, all right, like, I gotta, I gotta be up there with these dudes. Do you feel like the the fans and maybe people even within the organization have kind of written you off too soon because you've been dealing with so many injuries? Uh, absolutely, 
absolutely and that's that's fine <laughs> that's cool <laughs> i mean like i said at the end of the day i know what the big picture and the big goal for me is and that's to be you know one of the greatest players to ever touch the basketball floor and that's never gonna change that's my mindset since i started playing basketball you know being mentioned with the greats and i just think it's a little bump in the road well we got to talk about the tweet the mm. infamous tweet that kind of shook NBA Twitter a little bit. Ah. Listen, those Twitter fingers be getting people in trouble. But hey, you like to tweet that, you know, basically, without being verbatim, alluded to the fact of you leaving Sacramento and going elsewhere. Was it an accidental slip? Were you <clears> just, you know, upset and in your feelings watching somebody who went in your draft class drop or go for 50 in a playoff game while you're watching them or on TV? Or did you genuinely mean that you want to take your talents elsewhere? I mean, it wasn't an accident. <laughs> I mean, I liked it. Yeah. Um, but my thing is when I, when I sit back and see how people try to flip your words and if you listen to the podcast, you can see that wasn't like a me versus Trey thing. I love Trey. I love his family. Yeah. Like I said, that's just the competitor in me when I was watching that game. Again, I'm happy that he's doing that. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's showing what he can do. And um, that's not the, 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 the problem. It was just, for me, it was just watching it. It's like, damn, I gotta be here. Like, I wanna be here so bad. Like, I liked it. Like, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not, you know, going away from it. I'm, that's what I did and that's what it was. But I'm gonna be there one day and it's gonna be cool though. And I mean, listen, speaking of like, you know, your brother, mm. he likes basketball, loves basketball as much as you do, but he's <laughs> kind of changed yeah. things a little bit. He kind of shocked everybody when he withdrew from this year's draft and yeah. is going back to ASU. Does that have anything to do with that new NIL that was just passed? Or does he just not feel that he's going to go ahead and be drafted in the position that is worthy of his skill set? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Marcus is an NBA player. You know, when it's all said and done, and you know, I look at him every day and compete with him one-on-one, uh, -on -one playing, working out. He's better than a lot of guys that I'm playing night in, night out. Is he better than you? Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think he is. I don't think he is. But no, it's he's definitely like it's some battles though. You know, I know he's gonna do great things. So um, I'm not worried about you know the him going to the NBA or you know it's gonna happen because he's that good. When he eventually does make it into the NBA, you look at some of the other family duos that exist. You look at the Currys, you look at the Holidays, you look at the Lopez brothers. What do you think those battles are gonna be like between you and your brother? Every time we talk about the league, uh, he always says like, when I when I play, I'm gonna I'm I'm take off on you, I'm gonna dunk on you, or like just stuff like that. And I'm like, well, stop playing with me. <laughs> All right, don't do that. Like, stop playing. But we just go back and forth. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to the, that moment to where I can actually be on an NBA floor with my brother because that's something we've always talked about since we were kids in the backyard my grandpa's house just shooting and like we're gonna go to the NBA one day like we're gonna we're gonna be there one day and that'll be the happiest moment of my life to, to be able to whether it's on the same team whether it's against each other to be on the same NBA floor as my brother that, that'll be amazing